uh, we started throwing for skipjack uh, right before the sun came up. It did not pan out very well. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, kind of had some guys come up on us and throw upstream. Don't be that guy that throws upstream in front of someone when they're catching fish. Don't be that guy, please. Don't Just don't do it. It's just stupid. The fish are down deep. They're not upstream in front of me. They're in front of you, down deep. That's the whole trick to it most of the time. So they weren't really even there hardly. So we went over to the other dam and we did pretty good. All right guys, James of River Lunacy. Today's video is about how to catch skipjack. Just some tricks or this and that kind of thing. And uh, vacuum packing, sealing them. The whole uh, session on how I do that. Pretty simple, quick, easy video. Hope it helps you out. Stay tuned, we're gonna catch a few. Next thing you know, we'll be home packing them up. Show you how we do that too. See if we can get them to bite first. All right, so I'm using a Sabiki rig today. It's a number two size green, number two size hook with a green. It's got silver flex in it, and I'm already snagged on somebody's darn line. Got a half ounce on one rod and a three quarter ounce spoon on the other. I like to use spoons, it helps flutter if I need it to flutter. Let's see if we can get one to bite. Just kind of working uh, these little seams a little bit. A bunch of seams, a lot of boiling water. So a lot of times I don't cast real far. We'll toss in there. Sometimes you got to get it down. Well, they're starting to bite finally. Been a while. They're down deep. They kind of got crowded up a little bit to where now it's hard for me to get down deep. People right next to me. Well, let's make a cast, see if we can get us a couple. bit another quick trick for you save you a lot of time these two fingers the back of the head like that save you a lot of time a lot of people grab them like this and all that and then you got the slime all over you it just uh, takes a lot of time you got it all over your hands and then but that also does it stops them from shaking all over the place. Slow, slow and steady seems to be the name of the game. Nice and slow and steady. Change dams. Always watch the person next to you because they want to cast upstream and all this and that. Nice 
this one. Nice old medium guy there. Sometimes you gotta just keep changing it up. Slower, faster, down more. Give it a little pop here and there, a little twitch. Probably gonna change my color again. Go to white. Got a funny feeling white might be better. you can get two. Don't go winding them up real fast. If you bring them up to the top, slide them across the top, you're probably going to lose your fish. If you keep the skipjack down, he won't jump and spit the hook out on you. It's another trick on keeping your fish on and getting a couple extras if you're lucky. Let's try that again. Hopefully you can hear we got a lot of wind and a lot of cussing going on. These hooks hook into everything or a pain in the butt. Everybody's got their thing. You can use jigs, whatever it makes you happy. That's what I like to use. I seem to really like the white number two speaky rig right now. That one is uh, made by Ocean Cat. I'm not affiliated with them, but I do enjoy their uh, speaky rigs. So do the skipjack, apparently. Going real slow, trying to keep him down. It's a nice one. Filling them up, guys. Filling them. Let's get a 
few more and we'll be done. more we'll be done filming for this part of the video make sure you stay around and see how I clean them and do some stuff like that to preserve the fish make them last a while catch one more and we'll be done here at the dam cast let it drop a little bit my slack out from that wind loop guys we'll see you back at the house step one of the procedure on sealing these things measure out your skipjack I kind of already know pull your bag out it's about what you like there zip it this is actually a couple days before I go that way I don't have to mess with it when I get home put them in your machine just going to seal some bags. I just hit the seal button. So that way I have one end open, one end sealed. I'm going to do a whole bunch of these like this right now. Maybe 50 or 100 just to make sure I'm ready when I get home with them things. Then I can just dry them up so we're all nice and sealed straight across. There we go. That's step one part of it. All right, guys, we're back home, and uh, this is one of the coolers. Um, it's been a long, real long day, but this is how I uh, get ready to prep them, to uh, seal them. I put them on. This is an old duvet cover. Um, covers your duvet blanket, whatever you want to call it. Your old down blanket. It's a two-sided sheet. It's what I like to use. Um, it's just an old thing that I don't care about, stinking up, getting dirty, whatever. You can use a sheet, you can use paper towels. Some guys dry them all off with paper towels. I'm not worried about making them perfect. So I lay them down on here, out of my cooler. They're ice cold. Um, when I put them in my cooler, I don't use ice. I use ice packs, it just helps. That way I don't have water everywhere. I feel like it's easier for me. You're welcome to do it however you like. Everybody's got their way. And I just start taking and I roll it just like a big old log. And I just keep on going down this thing, getting them nice and tight. Real nice and tight here, all the way across this thing in layers. Just put them all in layers. And I just go along and try to get it as tight as possible. And then when I'm done, I let it kind of sit there a little while, maybe 10 minutes, just long enough to kind of help soak up some of the slime off the fish. And um, after I unravel it back out, I'll go ahead and wipe them down a little bit more with a towel. I'm not trying to be perfect here, but I like to get as much of the slime and moisture off of them as I can. And that's why I don't use uh, ice because then they're all soaking wet and then you're dealing with the big wet mess that's even more worse you know than what you already had to deal with here so this is a little more than I normally like to lay out on here so it's kind of they're really uh, tighter than I would like but I'm wiped out I've hardly had any sleep and like I said I'll go back over them with an old towel or even another sheet just to get some of the other ones that didn't get uh, dried up very well. But this will take a bunch of that moisture right out of them. It'll soak up a lot of that slime. You don't really want to freeze them with all that slime all over them. It, 
they'll still work and be okay, but your bait's not gonna last as long as in your freezer. It'll, uh, you know, they'll get all freezer burned. So let me wrap these guys up and then I'll be back and I'll show you how I seal them. Pretty simple with the vacuum sealer. Um, maybe there might be another trick or two that I can figure out to kind of pass along. So hang tight. We'll be back in a minute. All right. So oh, can you see? Remember the other day, Friday morning, today is Sunday, the Friday before work, I vacuum sealed a whole bunch of bags and got them ready. Saved me a bunch of time tonight. Normally when I roll these up, like I showed you how I had it rolled up, I will seal these. So everything I do is in order in a way, that way I'm uh, utilizing my time. And I'll take them and I'll put them in. I like to put them the back up against the corners of the bag. So I'll do one like that. And I'll change it. The direction. And then I'll do one this way. So they're different. Looks like I might have enough space. There's a few of these that are a little smaller. Um, so I'll change the direction because I want to have my bag full, you know what I mean? And I really don't want them smashed up against each other too much. So let's go up here and vacuum seal one and see how it looks. We're just going to place that right on in there like that. I keep mine on a dry mode. Make sure there's no tails up in the ceiling area. Snap one down. I pull it a little tight, not real tight. Pop it down. Hit the uh, vacuum and seal button. If I wouldn't have cleaned these off, there'd be slime running all up in my machine and it would not seal properly. So it's sealing now. The seal button went off. Pop her loose. There we go. Nice and tight. Yeah, they kind of pulled together. I was talking and not paying attention, but. You get the idea, there you go. Uh, when I stack them in my freezer, I kind of flip them this way, that way, just to suck up any room. Um, gotta have room for more if you get more, you know what I mean? So that's pretty much the end of the story, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that uh, little skipjack expedition there. It's been a long trip. Uh, this trip started at 12.15 a.m. Saturday, well, would be Sunday morning. Got up, ate some oatmeal, let the dogs run around, fed them, and uh, jumped in the truck with my buddy, Mr. Brown. We went on out to that Tennessee River there at the uh, Kentucky Dam, and uh, we started throwing for skipjack uh, right before the sun came up. It did not pan out very well. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, kind of had some guys come up on us and throw upstream. Don't be that guy that throws upstream in front of someone when they're catching fish. Don't be that guy, please. Don't Just don't do it. It's just stupid. The fish are down deep. They're not upstream in front of me. They're in front of you, down deep. That's the whole trick to it most of the time. So, they weren't really even there, hardly. So we went over to the other dam and we did pretty good. Catch you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed the video.